knowledge, their experience to prime your advancement first. Ignoring every resource available for you, both human and material and spiritual, in a quest to becoming, in a quest to making it, will only leave you in defeat, in shame and disappointment. And so Dr. Munro said very profoundly that in his opinion, and I agree with him till date, that there were certain questions that every man would have to ask and answer if they desired destiny maximization. It was Dr. Mike Mudok who said, a question is the seed for an answer. That means the difference between a madman talking, speaking gibberish, is that he's not answering, he's just speaking. Are we together now? An answer is a response, not just talking, not just discussion. So when you want an answer, the seed that you sow for the harvest of an answer is a question. And I want to challenge you the same way God used Dr. Miles to challenge me. What you call Koinonia Global today, and by the privilege of God's grace, if there is anything good that has come out of this life that is speaking to you, I credit it to the ability to answer, to know, and to work with these questions. They have remain pillars during my retreat i probe myself again along these questions and if for any reason i have difficulty answering any of them that becomes my next project are you ready there are five questions he taught us that every man must be able to ask to live an effective life and to actualize destiny don't assume don't pretend you know if you have gotten these questions and your answers are right, your destiny should be speaking now. If for any reason, even if you believe that you have got some knowledge of this, perhaps from its materials, once your knowledge has not produced results, keep listening and keep learning. It means there is something wrong with your understanding because faith has two layers. One is awareness. The second is comprehension. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing. The first hearing is unto awareness. The second hearing is unto comprehension or understanding. You're still with me? Shout amen. amen. The first question that we are going to be asking and answering tonight is a question of identity. It's a question, who am I? Please write it down. Who am I? It's a profound question that attempts to bring to your consciousness the concept and the value of identity psychologists and religious leaders and even scientists agree at this point that an individual who does not know himself or herself is already on the path to doom and the path to defeat there are many people today who are under the pressure to become several things depending on who is putting the pressure on them hallelujah and it is simply because they have not taken out time to study their identity identity is a very powerful thing it's a very profound thing sadly our world is gradually losing the sense of identity and it's resulting to all kinds of pressure people trying to show that they are making it preachers not being patient with process until they become business people leaders and so on and so forth identity crisis is a dangerous psychological cancer it can destroy a great destiny it is important that from the onset these are not questions you should ask at the end of your life these are the questions that guarantee you're reaching the end successfully are we together now there are certain questions you have the liberty of asking as you go but these are questions that are best answered before the journey or at the infancy of the journey so that if you have to turn back you would not have wasted years before making a u-turn are we learning now the thing about the school of the spirit and the school of destiny is that even if you are in error moving in the wrong direction for 20 years by the time you find the right path god will mandate that you return back and start the journey afresh you would think you would just shift to a new lane it doesn't work like that in the spirit hallelujah imagine spending 10 15 years of your life following a path that seemed right unto you 
only to find out that it's a way of destruction, it's a way of failure. And then you have to make that you turn again. The same distance you wasted arriving at your place of error is the same distance you will spend to come back to the point where you will start again. I'm praying that you will pay attention to the things that you are hearing so that you will not have to answer this question when your children are answering their own. Did you hear what I said? There are many people who will refuse to answer this question and they will be forced to repeat the classes in the school of the spirit and now answer this question together with their children or answer this question together with their grandchildren. And life has no respect for time that was ill-invested. If you did not invest in your time to maximize moments, you, your children will join you in the school of the spirit. Your grandchildren will join you in the school of the spirit and they will ask you, why are you answering this question at this point? The question of identity, Psalm 49 and verse 20. The Bible says a man that is in honor and understandeth it not is like a beast in the field that perisheth. Do you know what that means? Assuming you are royalty, for instance, maybe you came from a royal family, but you were never told for whatever reason, you will act like a slave and even be victimized by people who you were supposed to be higher than in terms of the privilege that you have. Many believers, because they do not understand their identity, they go through all kinds of psychological swings, trying to become the kind of person who will gain an applause from people. Let me tell you this, one of the cardinal pillars for effective leadership and becoming an influence is having a strong conviction of your identity. Because as you sojourn through life and destiny, hear me ladies and gentlemen, culture will try to redefine you. The failure of people will try to redefine you. The thinking of the time will try to redefine you. For instance, in our world right now, when you see a young man and perhaps pressing honorably to his life and destiny, chances are excellent that he will feel like a failure because he does not have a car, he does not have maybe some house, and so on and so forth. And there are many people who are actually doing well but simply because society has given a wrong parameter to measure masculinity, a wrong parameter to measure growth, a wrong parameter to measure ministry, a wrong parameter to measure success. The fake life that is eating up the average young man in our society is credited directly to identity crisis. Hallelujah. So even if I'm a dummy, once I am in a car and I'm driving it, I immediately have a sense of superiority to everybody thinking. That is the reason why many young people today have found themselves in all kinds of destructive vices. Almost every week, the law enforcement agents are apprehending someone who is involved in some kind of shady practice, some kind of destructive practice. And you ask the young man, what exactly are you looking for? The cliche in our world today is, I want to make it. Who is the I? That is the question we want to ask. Who is the I who wants to make it? Society has told us that we are failures when certain things does not happen, when certain things does not add up. Are we together? And some of you right now in this place, you are, you literally, you would have been better by far if you had that sense of self-security, for want of word, upon the strength of who God has made you. Some gentleman looked at you and said you are not a beautiful lady and that destroyed your sense of self-worth and you started acting and doing things, even stupid things because you are trying to fit. There is a cancer that is eating up young people in our world today is the pressure to belong. Have you heard such a statement? So they create mundane parameters that you must qualify to join certain groups or certain people and they are not all wrong, but there are some that are so destructive. There are groups and people today that if you are a sound Christian and you love the Lord, living a responsible life as a young man and a young lady, those groups will send you away. They will say you are too innocent to be part of them. They want bad people 
is, is like a credit. If you say you are a well-behaved person, they say, no, you are too naive and you are too stupid to work with us. We need people who are prone to destruction, prone to anger, prone to rebellion. Are we together? Someone who can beat anyone once you are angry and then they call it all kinds of names. And some of us who were once well-behaved are now becoming something that we were not designed by God because of the pressure to belong. Dressing, speaking, social media. There are people who were dressing well until they met certain groups of people and they told them, if you keep dressing like this, you will not marry. Now that you have changed, what has happened? Say deception. The basic definition of witchcraft is to cause someone to err using the tool of deception. Hallelujah. How about young men with the value of respect and dignity and honor? But then here comes a group of very confused but arrogant people who now begin to put pressure on your identity. And they say, Mr. Man, at the rate at which you are going, you will never get established. There is a way we do things. And after two years, of foolish work you find yourself in the prison perhaps for the next 10 years perhaps for the next 15 years and the thing is that when you get into trouble all the people who motivated you into that trouble will not come and own up and say we are here for you hmm. who am i is a question that i had to answer in my life if you know who you are you will reject the pressure from men to become anything god did not say about you Hallelujah. For instance, I learned from this revelation that having a car and having a house is not what defines me. I'm not saying those things are wrong. But if I suddenly feel good about my life just when I have a car and a house, it's a risk. What then happens when the car spoils? Your value for yourself also drops. So if I stand in the midst of someone who has a better dressing than me, I begin to feel like a failure. By what parameter? Who brought these parameters? It's time for you to begin to probe the things that represent the epicenter of your self-worth. Now, I'm not saying to not be challenged because there are some of us who really need to be challenged. If people don't challenge you, you will never leave that psychological cocoon that you are in. So being challenged is a good thing for many people. Hallelujah. Yes. There are people today, for instance, who are not earning up to, say, 100000 a month. But every great hotel, maybe in this city or restaurant, you will find them there. You are here again, say yes. <laughs> who is paying for this? No, by myself. 20000 out of a salary of 100000 You didn't tithe, you didn't give, you didn't save, you didn't do anything. And then... While the food is there, you now take um, this thing you put take and then you send it and say, look, maybe God is good or to God be the glory. <laughs> and then the people you hope to see, as always, you know I'm not being sarcastic, I'm probing you. What you see today that you call koinonia, ladies and gentlemen, is not just a journey of faith alone, it's a journey of patience. Life challenged our identity in various ways. But thanks be to God for the resilience to remain. When you find out what God has said about you, it doesn't matter who misunderstands. Or do, Many of us today want great organizations. You want to lead ministries. You want to lead businesses. And someone says stupid and you are crying. Am I, is this how I am? You mean this sister just looks at me and says, but the question is, are you stupid? Has the word of God ever told you you are stupid? Those who mentor and lead you, have they ever told you you are stupid? So someone who has no investment whatsoever in your life wants to come and stake, claim a stake in your mind and you give them permission, you give them entrance into your mind. Before I listen to you, I must see the contribution you have made to my destiny. You don't come as a stranger and want the seat of somebody who has made meaningful investments. Is someone learning now? So you must know how to edit opinions and throw rubbish to the, to the bin and keep moving. Someone looks at you and says, you look like you are not a powerful Christian. From you, I, I suspect that as a, this lady, you will most likely not be a great lady. 
Congratulations for your ignorance. Watch as you learn and ask God for forgiveness for the remaining part of your life. Because as for me, I'm evolving. Because like our people sang, the word of God is with me. The Holy Spirit is with me. God has placed models before me and a determination to succeed. No, there is no power in existence that sustains what it takes to keep you down. Are we together? I don't have the time to tell you everything the Bible says you are, but I will keep reminding you, my dear people, among the many things the Bible says about you is that you are light, you are salt. Say, I am light. Let the devil hear it. Say, I am salt. Yes, it says you are wonderfully and fearfully made. Yes, sir. It says you are the apple of his eyes. If God is that vulnerable about you, don't let some guy who has not made any meaning to your life, he's still figuring his left from his right, just comes and uses his ignorance to define you. And you go back crying and begin to live a life that is outside the script of your destiny. Our world has gained mastery in bullying people psychologically. Oh, look at this lady. She's not fine. Look at this guy. His head is too big. What kind of human being is this? Many of our children today are joining occults and joining all kinds of satanic things thanks to those kinds of negative statements. So when you tell a lady she's not beautiful, enough. When you tell a guy he's broke, he doesn't have money, enough. You put pressure on them to start doing a lot of things. But in the name of Jesus, I'm telling you now, everything Satan has been whispering to your ears that did not come from scripture, we decree and declare, may those sounds cease in your life. Is someone learning? Sinach taught us powerfully. I live a life of favor. I know I. There's a part of the song I like. Take a look at me, I'm a wonder. Listen, you've been singing it to you. Yes, listen. This is how you people don't learn. You have been crying with that song in your head. Now allow me to teach you what the song means. You hear what that song says? It says, take a look at me, I'm a wonder. It doesn't matter what you see now. Sounds to me like scripture. Hmm. It doesn't matter what you see. Don't let the 20 naira trouser deceive you. The person inside is a company that is rising. Don't be deceived that after the grace, while others are hopping into their cars, God bless them. And you are walking after such a powerful message and you are asking so what did i fall down for you are joking you don't know what entered your spirit the bible says now are we the sons of god and it does not yet appear if you had seen some of us 15 20 years ago and they told you this version of us exists in that version you will not believe it do you know the other versions that are still in you you have seen the weak one. Thank God you have seen the weak one once and for all so that every other thing you see is the strong one evolving. Yes, sir. Do you believe what you are hearing? Man of God, I know you've not started ministry, but it doesn't mean the call is not there. You think we're always celebrated? No. I taught my dear people in Zaria, you work out your own salvation. It does not start with doing. It starts with believing something about yourself. Hallelujah. When people hang themselves, what do you think leads them to go and get a rope? You know how painful it is to hang yourself and watch yourself die? Yet there are people who prefer that because life has told them something. I was told a story, I think it's just a maybe some fiction to illustrate a point that somebody was angry with life and he was wearing some clothes that were not really nice and he was on his way to go and hang himself and there was a beggar who was watching him when he saw him tying the rope he said please sir since you are going to die why don't you remove what you have and just give me because at least if you die you'll be naked and the man turned and said so what I'm wearing that I think is a shame is somebody's prayer request 
do you know how many people are secretly praying to be you they have seen something in you you have not seen your focus is just beauty whereas they've seen virtue and they are praying they've seen character and they are praying is someone learning you are just looking at uh, for want of what six pack or whatever number you are, you are looking for whereas someone is seeing a loyal a trusted person if you are hearing say amen, amen. God used Dr. Munro to train some of us to understand that the world will only celebrate what you celebrate if you hate yourself and you do not celebrate yourself it is fraud to ask people to celebrate someone you hate yourself somebody after this service you need to go back and say lord you've done me well oh thank god for the gift of me are we together that there's somebody today with all due respect with no arms and no feet and yet he's still confident about his life have you seen people like that god left them i believe to be inspirations to us you have your hand you have your feet you have everything complete and you are still saying you are not good enough Who am I? You need to answer that question now. And you do not identify yourself with things. If you say, I am a millionaire, uh, that is not bad, but that is not an intelligent answer. A millionaire means one who has millions. No. There is a more superior understanding that produces such a person. What happens to you if all the millions leave? What happens to you if all the fame and everything leaves? Most people have defined themselves with the things around them. So you live a life that looks like a failure and a miserable person. Suddenly you get a job with some oil and gas firm and you square up immediately. Hallelujah. Sitting in front here does not change me. Truly, I, I tell you, believe me when I tell you this. If I sit at the back, I'm still Joshua Selman, full of everything God gave me. And if you doubt it, you will give me time to prove it. Are we together now? Many people because of identity crisis today have gathered all kinds of enemies. I came to the occasion and they called me Joshua Selman, not Apostle Joshua Selman. Okay, they made a mistake. Sorry, it's all right. No, I won't forgive them. I went for a wedding and they started serving the other people before me. Okay, sorry. It was a, a mistake. No, that means you are saying they are higher than me. Who told you? Are we together? You were introducing people and you introduced brother A before brother B. So you are trying to say brother A is more important. Are you seeing how failure keeps suggesting things that is not even in the minds of people? I have taught you this. Someone can be looking at you like this. And you say this, this look looks like hatred. And the person is thinking about his rent. Not you. The person is just looking at you, but honestly, under God, what he's thinking about is how to beg his landlord. My dear people, hear me. This is not a call to being pompous, being loud without reason, but it's a call to a settled sense of confidence. No matter what you say about me, provided you are not God and you are not anyone in front of me that I respect you only wasted your energy and your sound do you have that kind of courage because there are many times as you'll be learning you will have to walk alone are we together now I believe everything God says he has made me my sufficiency is not of myself but of Christ who has made me an able minister Many years ago, I used to share this humorously. Um, those days when we started and I started traveling, I didn't used to wear all these kinds of things. I would just wear a polo and a jean and my palm, just flying. And you see the people waiting at the airport for the great man of God, whose message they have listened to, largely audio. So most of them have not seen me. Usually a few people will recommend to the church, you need to bring this man of God. Then I come down from the plane and they are looking at me. They are wondering, is it my protocol? Is it this? And when they see me, you can see the shock and the disappointment. I mean, this is what we've been waiting for. 
And then I greet them sometimes and they're like, okay, that's the car, please enter and let's go. <laughs> ah, it's not my fault. God put the grace in me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then usually after the meeting, they are now saying, sir, when again are you going to be, um, um, when will you be free? It's such a privilege. And I'm saying, look at the same people. Let me tell you the truth. When you know who you are, you don't need to waste time telling people who you are. If you find yourself always trying to say who you are, it is a mechanism to manage your not knowing who you are. Does a lion tell you it's a lion? Lions roar and it stops there. An eagle does not need to tell you I'm an eagle. Keep watching the sky. Sooner or later, you will see that there is only one bird that is soaring with such level of mastery. That bird is not called a pigeon. It's called an eagle. Are we together? The pressure to try to prove a point is something that must die permanently. If anybody thinks you are a failure, forgive their ignorance while they learn. And if they insist that you are a failure, leave them with God, the one who called you to make you successful. If a gentleman looks at you and says you are not fine enough, thank God because you would have married the wrong person. Let him carry his trouble and go. Are we together now? Did you hear what I'm saying? And if some lady tells you that she wants somebody with all the money in the world, bless God for her. And thank God for the one who will see you while you are rising so that you will not have any fear when you rise. Identity crisis. My dear people, hear me. There is more within you than you will ever imagine. There is more within you. Yes, you can be a work in progress. Don't let your limitations define you. Did you hear what I said? Yes. It does not mean to embrace everything, including what is destroying your life. That's not what I'm advocating. Some of you have very bad manners with all due respect. Some of you are not people of character. Some of you are not visionary people. I'm not saying embrace that part of you, but have it that there is potential within your spirit. The Bible says we are born of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. Hallelujah. I heard God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo, say that there's nowhere he will go in the world, that the Lord gave him something he calls a far above mentality. That there is nowhere he will go in the world that he will allow himself to be intimidated and he's proved it with his life now there is a false sense of confidence where you abuse and insult people they say lift your hand you say no i'm fearfully and wonderfully no you are rude and ill-trained that is not how fearfully and wonderfully made people behave this is not my advocacy are you are you getting me now yes or you sound very sarcastic you laugh at people you fight people and say i'm like that no that's an attack. Come next week so that you, your problem is solved once and for all. But I'm teaching someone here who before the alert comes to your account, you are still confident. You are in one room and you don't hide where you are staying. You don't follow through a three bedroom and turn around and go to your one bedroom because you are trying to show that you are what is there to be afraid of. Are we together? You are not the first to stay in one room. You are not the first to have one cooking pot. Stay there with honor and snap it while you are there because it will become a monument tomorrow. That one room is not your house. That one room is a retreat center. Pray there. No God there. Fast there. Build there. Read books there. And emerge. When you become bigger than that room, that room will run away from you. It's true. There is a level you get to in the spirit where it becomes unfair to remain there. That room will run away. Even if you don't leave it, it will leave you. Who am I? I'm showing you the kind of training that constructed our understanding. So that today, by the privilege of God's grace, things and people and achievement is not what defines some of us by the grace of God. Thank God for the crowns, the accolades and everything, but my identity as the son of God 
supersedes my identity as any other thing. I know that I'm the son of God. I'm a child of God, loved by him, jealously loved by him. Koinonia or otherwise, if you have this mentality, believe me, there are many things you will not cry about again. There are many things you will not have to discuss about again. You will save yourself wasteful um, times in prayer and invest in constructive prayer. Lord, look at what people are saying about me. <laughs> no. Hallelujah. Some gentleman who just came here now, you may not look like it, but my goodness, God is doing something in you. Hallelujah. So we live fake lives, trying to buy a designer watch. I'm not saying anything is wrong with that. Designer this, designer that, and claiming all kinds of things, running into debt, getting into trouble, aligning with wrong people who bring wrong values to destroy us. And many of us cannot be alone. One of the ways that you have truly gained security is the power to be alone, and yet no, you are not alone. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. What's the revelation? For thou art with me. Who am I? This is what we teach and train the students in the school of ministry. Among the many things. Listen, my life changed. I don't know how insecure, maybe how, I don't know what kind of life I would have been living today. And with all due respect, I have watched people and I continue to watch with shock and sympathy, genuine sympathy. I have seen the danger of identity crisis. When it comes upon a leader, when it comes upon an individual, it will make you do things you will hate, but you will still keep doing it. Because you are trying to gain the applause of men. First John chapter 3 and verse 1. We need to hurry up. I sense that God is speaking to someone. I sense that God brought someone to church tonight to tell the person, the way you are going, you will not make it that way. The pressure to prove a point, you borrow cars, you borrow clothes, you borrow everything. Are we together? You want to, that, that obsession for visibility. No, God gives visibility, but not by manipulation. When you merit it by growth, it comes naturally. I taught you here in Koinonia two years or so ago that success is not what you pursue. Success is what you attract by who you become. If you steal tomorrow's bread today, you will be hungry tomorrow. You are stealing from tomorrow's kitchen to eat it today. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to my world. Jesus is more than gold. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to my world. Jesus is more than gold. Sing it one more time. That if all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. Let me tell you why I'm teaching you this. The journey from where most people are until they become is quite long. It will take time. And for the most part of that journey, you'll be walking alone. You will walk alone in the midst of noises that you will be hearing. You will not make it. You can't go far. I taught them in Zaria again. If you had looked at Joseph, the one in the pit, not the one in the palace, you would look at him and there would be nothing that looked like prophecy upon him. But he had the self-security to continue. Such that even when he was in the prison, he knew he was not in a, a prisoner. He was just in a prison. It's one thing to be in a prison, but it's another thing to identify yourself as a prisoner. If you are call yourself a prisoner, even if you are in a palace, you are still a prisoner. 